Hey, psst. Did you know that Karlak isn't the only companion that has a special scene at the beginning of the game? Astarian actually has two. During an Astarian origin run, after you escape the Nautiloid and wake up on the beach, you can either head straight to camp or pick up Shadowheart and Gale, if you want, <laughs> and take them with you. Keep in mind that if you go past the Sigil Circle area where you pick up Gale, this scene cannot be triggered. Once I got near Lazel and the Emerald Grove, it was no longer accessible. But if you remain near the beach, go to camp instead, and take a long rest, you'll unlock a secret scene. Try to rest, but your mind won't settle. Just yesterday, you were seducing a young noble, luring him to your master's lair. Today, you'd been kidnapped by mind flayers, chased through hell by dragons, and thrown out of a burning ship. And you felt the sun on your skin. You should have burst into flames. You wonder if your ability to walk in the sun is a side effect of the tadpole the mind flayer put in your eye. It must be. All you know for sure is, given time, it will turn you into one of them. Getting rid of the tadpole will mean returning to the darkness. Unless, unless you understand it, master it. Which means finding an expert. You mentally shuffle through places likely to have an expert in mind flayers. Candlekeep, Neverwinter, Menzo Baranzan, Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate is close to your master's coven, but also home to amazing scholars. Still, that's a problem for the morning. He'll believe you if you tell him what happened, but he won't. Forgive. Of course, you might already be a mind flayer by the time you return to Casador. You could try getting rid of the tadpole, but that probably means returning to the darkness. Unless, unless you understand it, master it, which means finding an expert. You think on the day, the sunshine, being alive, more or less. Despite everything, you relax into peaceful meditation, satisfied with all that's happened. Perhaps you wouldn't sleep so well if you knew what was coming. The worm in your head might not even have an appetite for undead meat. Until you know more about the tadpole, you can't be sure how much danger you're in. You have to understand it. Master it. Which means you need to find an expert. You smile meditating on the flames that engulf his cruel face. You might have noticed that this one is a bit different from Karlax. It's not voice and it's also pretty short, but don't worry, what I'm about to show you next makes up for it and then some. I'm sure that we're all familiar with Astarian's camp scene in Act 1 when he tries to bite your Tav or Dirge, but what if you could see it from his perspective? What if he bit one of the other origin characters instead? I included all of the companions for this one. Enjoy. The forest. Dark. Cold. Foreboding. Hello? Anyone there? First, thou shalt not drink the blood of thinking creatures. Second, 
Thou shalt obey me in all things. Where are you? Show yourself! Third, thou shalt not leave my side unless directed. Your heart pounds, but you're ready. He's going to regret coming for you. Fourth, thou shalt know that thou art mine. Free, lie to yourself, boy, but not to me. You are mine forever. Casador, your master. You have to get back to him quickly. If you're late, he'll flay you again. What will he say when he finds you can walk in the sunlight? And he can't. And then it dawns on you. If you're free to walk in daylight, can you be free of Casador too? Free of his rules? First, thou shalt not drink of the blood of thinking creatures. You look at your companions, sleeping, helpless. How badly do you need to know? You can smell the sweetness of her skin, hear the beat of her pulse. You try to control yourself, but it's too much. The hunger takes over. What the... Back off, freak! You didn't want to hurt me! I'm bleeding, you pasty ghoul! A rat-sucking vampire. Just my luck. But all right. You sound sincere, but no more of this. Next time, it'll be a stake in the heart. You smile, grateful. A lucky escape for you both. I'm surprised I managed to get some rest after last night's interruption. Would you have had the self-control to not drain me dry if I hadn't stirred? I'm not sure I want to think about it. I hope you can keep your cravings in check going forward. Otherwise, I think you and I will be parting ways. Understood? Fine. But don't take me for granted. Not my company, and certainly not my blood. A vampire could make for an interesting ally in combat, if nothing else. Blood gushes into your mouth. You can feel it filling the more inside you, filling your soul. You fall back, glorious blood coating your throat. You creep back to your bed with a full belly and singing heart. For the first time in centuries, you feel happy. Oh, I have to say I'm feeling rather worn out lately, Astarian. Curious. Is this a good idea, you wonder? 
You and Shadowheart have a certain rapport, but is it strong enough to weather such a revelation? Hells. Why can't I just have normal, boring companions? I should be grateful you told me, at least. So, a vampire spawn. Is my throat safe? That's good enough for me. Well, the truth's out now in either case. Did you want something else? You can smell the sweetness of his skin. Hear the beat of his pulse. gushes across your lips, but something's wrong. Very, very wrong. You're a bloody vampire, but you bit off more than you can chew. You clearly have your secrets. I have mine. Let my blood be a warning to you. There's more to me than meets the eye. I am not for eating. I thought I'd awaken feeling, well, drained. But I seem to be quite as well as ever. Admittedly, that's not saying much given our ongoing predicament. Nonetheless, I'm glad I woke up when I did. As I said, I'm willing to move past the whole exsanguination issue so long as you can promise to keep that hunger of yours in check. I know what it is to have an uncontrollable hunger within you. You can hardly be blamed for your desperation in trying to satisfy it. So, we move forwards. And when the occasion arises, we show our enemies exactly how sharp those teeth of yours can be. You can smell the sweetness of her skin, hear the beat of her pulse. You try to control yourself, but it's too much. The hunger takes over. Tskva! I woke to your teeth on my neck. Why should I not slice open yours? I accept your explanation. We remain allies, for now. But I suggest you find a new subject for your tests. You smile, grateful. A lucky escape for you both. <sighs> so an undead slinks among us. I am not averse to your kind, Astarian. Queen Vlakith herself dwells in undeath, and she is no less revered for it. And no less alluring. Hey, yo. But sweet <laughs> as my blood is, it is not for the quaffing. Luscious as my meat is, it is not to be dined on. So much as smack your lips when I'm near, and I will sever you piece by piece. I'll leave you to guess which piece I plan to start with. Am I understood? Oh, good. I'd hate to see you subject yourself to my further mockery. Blood gushes into your mouth. You can feel it filling the more inside you, filling your soul. You fall back, glorious blood coating your throat. <sighs> I would... Forget it. Chatter already, Tusky. Girl, damn, I just want to talk. Lazelle seems to have a touch of respect for you. Perhaps she'll take the news with grace. 
or whatever passes for grace for a Githyanki. Of course you are. I may be an outsider to these lands, but I'm hardly ignorant of your kind. Your breath reeks of blood iron. You slink like a darkling and preen like a parrot. You wear your identity like a second skin. I am not averse to your kind, Astarian. Queen Vlakith herself dwells in undeath, and she is no less revered for it, and no less alluring. But so much as smack your lips when I'm near, and I will sever you piece by piece. I'll leave you to guess which piece I plan to start with. Am I understood? Chuck. Anything less than a full promise is hardly your very best. I've drawn my limits. It would be a great pity for you should you cross them. You can smell the sweetness of his skin. Hear the beat of his pulse. You try to control yourself, but it's too much. The hunger takes over. Damned monster, back off! You're a vampire. I'm afraid that makes you a monster. Fine. You sound sincere. But no more of this. Next time, it'll be a stake in the heart. You smile, grateful. A lucky escape for you both. The most peaceful rest I had in ages. Strange, given how you plunge those pointed canines right into my neck. A lesser man would sever that well-coiffed head from your neck for the insolence without a moment's thought. Lucky for you, I'm not such a man. <laughs> After your little sundown antics, I'm not sure I'm buying what you're selling. Let's make a bargain. A pact, if you will. Keep your fangs out of innocent flesh, and I won't drive a stake through your pasty white chest. Deal? Now that's a pact I can get fully behind. Karlak's fires raged in Baldur's Gate before she escaped to Avernus, as my source told it. Blood gushes into your mouth. You can feel it filling the more inside you, filling your soul. You fall back, glorious blood coating your throat. Come now, did you think I couldn't tell? Let's see, there's the pallid skin, the stealthy tendencies, the long canines. You may as well scrawl a red V on your forehead. A lesser man might sever that well-coiffed head from your neck. Good thing for you, I'm not such a man. Besides, not even the Blade of Frontiers is immune to your not inconsiderable charms. Let's make a bargain. A pact, if you will. Keep your fangs out of innocent flesh, and I won't drive a stake through your pasty white chest. Deal? Finally, a pact I can get fully behind. The tiefling's blood pulses hot as lava, pungent with a harrowing, life-ending power. The thought of putting your fangs to her neck makes you feel sick. Karlak was way too hot to bite, <clears throat> so I had to take matters into my own hands. Uh, uh, it's hot! God, it, it's burning! What the hell did you expect, Astarion? Come on! <laughs> this actually has two different versions depending on if you told her you were a vampire or not. Take a look. It's hot! God, it's burning! <laughs> That'll teach you, vamp. You bit me. No one bites me without my say-so. So you're a vampire then. 
I had my suspicions. If that were true, you wouldn't have been feeding in our camp. Why didn't you tell me sooner? Fair enough. But I hope you know by now that I'm on your side. Anyone tries to hurt you, and they'll have to answer to the big mad furnace. No more secrets, all right? We're in this together, together. I can live with that. While we're at it, let's take a bite out of Gale. Oh. Your blood tastes like bile. What is wrong? Oh. Serves you right. Next time, ask before you bite. I also bid God's favorite princess, but she got super mad for some reason. <laughs> You're making me regret my decision to join you. Sharpen up, or we're done. After seeing Gale and Karlak's reactions, I took it a step further and I bit someone during combat. You're a vampire. I've had my suspicions about you for some time now. And there you go, confirming them with truly audacious gusto. Hmm. You're a vampire. Do not undersell yourself. You may not have the Grand Lair nor Loyal Swarm, but... A vampire spawn is still part of the vampire family. Technically. The real conundrum here is why weren't you honest with me? I'm quite open-minded. It's one of my finer qualities. And there's some stiff competition in that department. I can tell you what I don't like. Unwittingly sleeping next to someone with a taste for blood and a tendency to lie about it. I'm happy to draw a line under the matter and move forward. But from here on, no more hiding things from me. Agreed? Oh, I suppose that will do for now. But none that pose the threat of imminent death or destruction. For me, or yourself, or anyone else for that matter. Now, unless you have any other deep, dark secrets to own up to, shall we continue on? So you're a vampire, Astarian. I suppose I shouldn't really act surprised. The signs aren't exactly subtle, if you care to look. Perhaps I should have said something before you actually bit someone. Peckish! Why didn't you tell me? I suppose I can understand that. More than most, perhaps. But no more secrets. Understand? Perhaps I'm a better liar than you are, then. All the more reason to be honest with me. I'll see right through you. Now that we have some semblance of an understanding, did you want anything else? Well, well, well. A vampire in our very camp. I have my suspicions, which you proved all too right. Well, yeah. If you were a proper vampire, you wouldn't be trudging through the mud with muggins over here. Why didn't you tell me sooner? He sounds like a real prick. Well, listen, Astarian, they aren't here now. And if they show their ugly face, I'll crack it open. All right. 
No more secrets, all right? We're in this together, together. I can live with that. Squaw! Two punctures, deeper than the others. Minimal seepage. Shkaketh! A vampire. An undead slinks among us. Which means, technically, you're far easier to kill than a full-fledged vampire. How very fortunate for me. How fortunate for you that I am a reasonable woman. I'll let you live. I'll even let you keep the privilege of my alliance. In exchange, you'll keep your fangs away from me and anyone in our group. Am I understood? Chuk. Anything less than a full promise is hardly your very best. You know where I stand. And if you so much as smack your lips when I'm near, I will sever you piece by piece. I'll leave you to guess which piece I plan to start with. Now, is there anything more we should discuss? I tried talking to Will, but he started talking about Mazora, <laughs> so I bit him instead. What in the holy hells? Are you a vampire? What in the hells? Oh shit! You're a god's damned vampire! God's damn it, Astarian! A lesser man would sever that well quaffed head from your neck without a moment's hesitation. Lucky for you, I'm not such a man. <laughs> After your little sundown antics, I'm not sure I'm buying what you're selling. Let's make a bargain. A pact, if you will. Keep your fangs out of innocent flesh, and I won't drive a stake through your pasty white chest. Deal? Now that's a pact I can get fully behind. Alright guys, that's all I've got for Astarian's origin scenes. The scene with Casador should trigger on your first long rest, but sometimes it can be a little finicky and you may have to reload. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Your time is valuable and I appreciate you stopping by. If you want to see more Baldur's Gate 3, Easter eggs and secrets, hit subscribe if you want. Bye bye.